Coach, let's go back to the Wichita State weekend. Cameron Crane Friday, <laughs> Cameron Crane Sunday. That's unusual. What went into the thinking and the decision on that? Yeah, you know, obviously just um, trying to kind of, you know, obviously analytically trying to not let somebody go through a lineup three times, um, especially the top of their order, which could do a lot of damage. So um, obviously Cam went out Friday, pitched a few innings, and, um, you know, we just felt like we needed to make a change and get somebody else in there. And um, But then obviously it only threw, what, 40 pitches or whatever it was. So it was felt like we knew we could use them again on Sunday. And so we just felt like the best option for us to use them was uh, to use them in the beginning. And so, you know, obviously in the big leagues are using these openers and, and whatnot. So it was kind of in that situation where we just felt like uh, see, you know, what he looked like and how he did and, um, you know, went out there and, you know, Pitched an inning, managed, you know, obviously a big situation, gave it up a run, but bases loaded, one out, and got out of it, which was awesome, and um, able to get through kind of the lineup and then and then flip it. And so, um, you know, n- not, you know, prototypical, I guess, and how, and how you go about your starting pitching, but, you know, you, we, we just feel like we're trying to do things to find ways to win games. And, um, and uh, obviously with the injuries and stuff like that, just uh, guys need to step up, but we got to do some things maybe a little bit different. So uh, that's the way it worked out uh, that weekend and, who you know, Maybe it happens again, and maybe it doesn't. Like, we'll just kind of take it day by day, and that's kind of been our, our, our mantra that weekend was just, just try to win on Friday, and then we'll figure out Saturday on Saturday. And then when we got to Saturday, it was just we weren't saving anybody or setting anything up for a Sunday. It was just what's going to give us the best chance to win on Saturday, and then we just repeated that again on Sunday. Pet over the weekend, a couple of different guys gave you really good outings. Yeah, it was huge. I mean, obviously the long outings by Vespi and Santala and, and Rudy um, were huge. I mean, we needed those guys to step up and – um, we knew that we were going to ex- expect a lot out of the bullpen, and, and we needed those guys, uh, anybody. We need somebody to, to kind, of, kind of step up and go through the lineup a few times and give us some zeros and, and be able to manage the game. And so uh, it was great to see. Those guys really did a great job. And I mean, the whole bullpen, top to bottom, just was able to watch Jacob Marlowe, huge three innings in, on Sunday. Um, I mean, it was just big, and, and we're going to need to continue that the rest of the year. And so it's good to see some guys that, you know, especially like uh, – I mean, all those guys really, um, you know, that needed to step up, but guys like Rudy and, and Jacob and um, Kramer, I mean, those guys that have never been at the D1 level that are just continuing to grow and get better every appearance. And so um, as we get to the, the, this this kind of final part of the race, like we're going to need all those guys to, to be better than they were in the beginning of the year. And that's always our goal is to be the best that we can be individually and as a team, um, continually get better and be our best version of ourselves at the last – few weeks of the season and uh, play our best baseball and so it's been good to see some of those guys step up and really start to feel comfortable and and, and pitch really see from William Saxton in the second half of the conference yeah. schedule I mean just get back to being him you know I think he, he may put a little bit too much pressure on himself to be to be good and knows these you know again we needing guys to step up and I just need will to be will but again I think just the similar uh, contributions that those other guys gave this weekend of being able to go out there and put zeros up on the board trust your stuff um and just throw strikes. Um, you know, the batting average against is very low. He's got to be able to trust that the stuff in the zone is really, really hard to hit. Um, but then you just go out there and manage. I mean, you're going to walk people. Like it's just inevitable. Like that's the nature of the game. And things are going to happen. Like whether it's you know cheap hits or bloopers or those kind of things. Like um, guys going to make errors behind you. And you just got to be able to manage the game and, and put up or, or avoid giving up big innings. And I think that we struggled with that in the ECU weekend, obviously, where we just had a couple innings that we just couldn't stop the, the snowball from, from getting bigger and bigger. And so uh, this weekend, I thought we did a much better job of that, of being able to, you know, get in the first inning on Sunday, Cam Crane gets bases loaded one out. That easily could have been a four or five run inning instead it's a one run inning. And those are the things that end up giving you opportunities to win games and, and trusting the offense and giving them a chance and not having to feel like they're down five, six, seven, eight runs, but, you know, keep the game close and, and let us try to score and um, and then just keep continuing to go out there and, and put up zeros. But I think every pitcher has to go out and just feel like I just gotta I'm gonna pitch this one inning. I'm just gonna do my best to, to to pitch this inning. And then if we tell them to go out and pitch another inning, then go do that. And it's not you're not trying to save. You're not trying to I gotta throw four or five innings here. I don't need I don't need anybody to do that. We got enough arms in the in the bullpen uh, that we just need to be great at throwing one inning. Uh, feel like you're the closer of that inning. Uh, and close that inning. And if we tell you to go back out and close another one, then go do that. And I think that, you know, um, every pitcher needs to have that mentality to go out there and, and, and just give it their all um, for one inning 
and then and then we'll figure out the next thing. You know, when, when we come back in the dugout. Who's David Litchfield? Yeah, I mean, I think in a variety of roles. Um, you know, obviously, just trying to find the right matchups, and you know, you know, one thing I'm proud about David is just is just his attitude and, and work. He just continues to show up and try to get better. And obviously, it's been frustrating um, for him, and, and I feel his frustration. I know he's frustrated, but we just got to continue to work. Um, we got to get him back to being the guy that we know that he can be and um, and maybe throwing out of the bullpen is going to do that and so giving him some opportunities to continue to to work on some things and put him in good situations and uh, obviously somebody that you know in the past has been really really good at the end of games and um, you know hopefully that maybe this is just more of a comfort level and just get him back to remembering what what he is all about and the success that he's had and how much he's meant to this program. And so um, he'll be used in a variety of ways, and whether that's closing games, whether that's coming in, um, you know, in, in situations, you know, in the seventh, eighth, or ninth inning that um, we just feel like he's a good matchup. Like we just we just got to find that, those matchups and, and just find ways for him to continue to, to work and, and get back. The sinker really is, I think, the, has just been the biggest um, – issue for him is that it's just it's flattened out a lot and um you know his bread and butter is to is to miss barrels and to get under barrels and, and use that sink to avoid you know good contact and uh, i think he just needs to get back to that so we've been i know nick and him have been uh, in the office every day really breaking down video of last year and in the fall and in january and even the first couple of starts like just trying to find the differences and and get back to where we feel like he can be and look if we're going to be really really good like we need David to to be a part of you know our staff and be somebody that we can count on every single day so um, and I expect nothing more than that's going to happen and just it's just going to take some time and him getting back out there and getting more comfortable. That's a health update Hunter yeah. Connor how do things look going into this weekend series an yeah. important weekend series against yeah. Tulane? Huge weekend um, you know Hunter Hunter is going to be out for the rest of the year he'll have surgery and um within the next like 10, 12 days. Uh, so that's going to be a big, a big loss to our staff. Um, Connor, um, you know, is coming back. Um, I can't say he's going to be back this weekend. I'm, I'm hopeful, um, but, you know, I think he's close. Uh, we've made some progress with the blister, and uh, I feel like we're making, um, making good progress. So uh, we've done some different things with the doctors and trainers. So um, we'll see how practice goes today. Um, see how he feels. I mean, we've been doing things to make sure that his arm and his legs and his body stay in, in shape so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so it's just a matter of is he going to be able to, you know, we feel like, one, be the best version of himself, and then, two, not not have any re- reoccurrences. And I think that's the big thing is making sure that going forward we can do that. So um, I'd say 50-50 for this weekend, but we're trending in the right direction. Nick, Alex, and injuries in previous seasons – does it force you to reevaluate what you're doing from a strength and conditioning standpoint? How do you look at injuries? Is it fluke, uh, or do you look at it as something maybe systemic? In the yeah, program? I mean, I think you're always always looking for for things. I mean, I think you're all at the end of every season, you're always reevaluating everything that we do, uh, not just from one aspect, but everything, and from reevaluating what I'm doing as a coach, with reevaluating what each coach is doing at their positions, uh, reevaluating um, from a strength and conditioning, from a, from a athletic training, from um, just how we feed kids, and from, you know, everybody in the, in the program gets evaluated at the end of the year. So I don't think it's any different. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, I think that at the end of the day, I think it's a, a, a synergy, a, 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 everybody working together to try to figure out, you know, I don't, I don't think that there's ever one thing that probably causes any of this stuff. It, it's probably more of a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and, and just trying to figure out that synergy and how every piece of the puzzle fits together um, and trying to figure out um, how we can better better do things. And so, um, you know, that, that's constantly on my mind, but at the same point, like I, I, I don't put too, too much effort and energy into it right now just because – I, my energy needs to be on trying to figure out how to win games with, with whoever we have. And so, um, but obviously as we get through and closer to the end of the year and, and get through and, and get done, like um, I'll reevaluate everything and try to figure out if there's a reason or, or again, how those pieces fit together and figure out a, a better way to do things to try to make sure that, you know, we try to stay away as much as we possibly can. Um, but obviously with COVID and, and all that kind of stuff, like it's just, it, when you look at around the country, like, you know, 
there's like seven first round arms that are out for the year. Um, it's just been a huge issue in college baseball. And what is the reasoning? I mean, there's been a lot of discussions and whether it was COVID and shutting down for so much time and then trying to ramp back up and what were guys doing over the break? Were they not doing enough? Were they doing too much of training and tra- chasing velocity and all that kind of stuff? Um, you know, so um, I do believe that we've done a really good job of trying to baby the kids and work them back in a, in a, in a way that was going to keep them as healthy as we possibly could. Um, but obviously, you know, it, we just had some bad luck as well. So we just, we do got to get to the bottom of it, but you know, from my perspective until I really do a deep dive, but you know, off the, you know, just from the, just from looking at it on a day-to-day basis, like I feel like we're still doing the right things to do everything we can to protect. Pressure off your pitchers, of course, is a lot of offense, and your team really showed out against Wichita State. Yeah. Trent, Michael Brooks, just talk about the performances you saw from your guys yeah. against Wichita. I mean, top to bottom, I think um, we just did a great job. You know, we talked a lot about having to use our tool box and tool set a lot more. We had a bunch of base hit bunts. We put a lot more pressure on, on them than we had in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and then again, like a guy like Michael Brooks, uh, even though he's a redshirt freshman, first time playing, and just scuffling at the beginning of the year and understanding the game, just to see him continue to work and continue to just show up every day, and and you know it's good to see him starting to to play better. Trent, you know, obviously had a great fall and, and early time for us, and just got off the gates a little bit slower and and scuffled, especially there in the middle, and hadn't been playing. So really proud again of just showing up and um, you know continuing to try to work in batting practice and be ready when the opportunity calls. And you know, his number got called this weekend. And, um, you know, it's just always good to see guys that, you know, just don't don't roll over and die, don't don't quit, don't just throw the, the towel in and say, like, well, this isn't going the way that I thought it was or the way I wanted it to, and I'm just, I'm, I'm done. Like, uh, you know, and mailed in. And he continued to work and got his opportunity and took advantage of it. So, um and again, it's it's tough. I mean, without without Alex and Nick, like it just changes our offense. Um, and again, we we've struggled just to be able to relax, breathe, and then realize, okay, like what are we going to do now? Like, and, and so I think again, just getting back to some of the things that each individual player does well, and then just putting getting back to what we do. And we talk about being dynamic, and um, you got to win in different ways. And unfortunately, like without those two guys, like. You know, and again, it's funny because we don't think about hitting home runs. We think of those two guys as being our big power guys. And you go, you're going to hit home runs, but we hit a ton of home runs this weekend without them. But I think that that comes with just trying to to move the line, trying to get to the next guy. Like, we I mean, just get on base and get the next guy up, trusting the guy behind me, not trying to feel like I have to do something or do too much or try to hit home runs. It's just, let me try to get a bait, bump, bump base hit. Let me try to bring the infield in. Let me try to get a base hit through the side. Let me just, just two outs. Let's just keep moving the, the line. And we had a bunch of two out hits. A bunch of two out RBIs, um, and you do that when you just when you just focus on uh, trying to put together good at bats and trusting the people behind you and just having a plan of saying like, just don't make the last out, like just get the next guy up. And um, when you do that, like good things happen. And, and so it was really good offensively to see a lot of gr- a lot of guys step up uh, and play really well this weekend. And you know, hopefully we can continue that as we as we finish. Hey, this Andrew season. Sundin, you say. Um, it's been an unbelievable ride, um, and just to see the growth of him, he has been um, obviously a, a huge surprise. Um, and, and just again, I know I've talked about it a ton. Just the growth and maturity, and, and you know the difference from the fall to, to now, and you know getting buried just because of, of you know his own decisions. You know what I mean? And, and just you know not being maybe fully bought in or whatnot, and then just seeing him come and step up in front of the team in January and say like I'm, I'm gonna be better and I'm, I'm a, and, and then to see him work and some of it's been injury based but it gets thrown in the mix and man the guy just competes he keeps showing up he keeps having a ton of success and really difficult for a catcher um, not only to play but to play at that level as a, as a freshman um, just from a physical standpoint and um, mental standpoint I mean it's a grind it's an, a difficult position to play and so to be able to have the success on both sides of the ball and just keep showing up and it's been fun to watch and you know it just feels like every hit he gets is a big one um, and so really really proud of him for everything that he's done and uh, the maturity and the growth and um, it's been it's been you know in terms of offensively I mean it's been kind of a savior of sorts in terms of just being able to give us another guy in the lineup that can really help us and um, losing those two big bats and obviously we're going to get Alex back at some point but uh, you know especially the last couple of weeks to have you know to have those guys all out and for him to step up and get so many big hits and 
um, to play the way he's been playing has been a real shot in the arm for our See, offense. Your team feed off of his energy and enthusiasm. Well, I mean, I think it's huge. I mean, I think that anytime you get somebody that goes out there, and I think sometimes hitting is can be con- contagious. Uh, so to see him go out there and just, I mean, get hit by pitches and, and to have huge hits. And, um, and again, I think that I think all of our expectations of him were so low, you know what I mean? And to see him do so well, I think that everybody is so excited for him because I think they've seen the growth and maturity. I think everybody understands, like, the changes that he's made. And for him to step up in front of the team and say, hey, look, like, I'm sorry, like, I'm going to be better. Um, I think the respect level just goes up when you see somebody actually do it and actually um, change their mentality and change the way that they go about their business and to have the success that he has and just to keep going out and, you know, he gets, gets hit by a pitch in the leg and just, you know, everybody sees him in the dugout struggling, like, trying to get wrapped and, and figure out a way and limping and then just go out there and compete. Like, I mean, I think that's contagious. I think that you guys feed off that energy and feed, you know, hey, like, man, like, look at this freshman just going out and, and competing and, and, you know, kind of putting his body on the line and plays at the plate, just kind of getting hit. And, um, you know, again, obviously as a catcher, it's a difficult position, but I think as a young guy to, to, for them to, our players to see him go out there and just keep keep showing up and keep competing. Like, I think it brings energy. Um, and it's, it's, I think again, the contagious kind of mentality of hitting can, can do that. And I think that he's kind of been one of those guys that has led that, led that, offense in terms of every time he goes out and does something, man, everybody else wants to go do it. Fire up the opponent a little bit as well. You saw a little of that over the weekend with Wichita State. They didn't care quite for his reaction to hits and home runs. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I I thought it was, you know, again, in in the realm of what baseball and college baseball are, I didn't think it was that bad. But, you know, they are a very – I have a lot of respect for Wichita. Obviously, Eric Wedge being an old-school big league manager, you know, I think that the way that they have instilled in their kids and – uh, just kind of that Midwestern values and all kind of thing. Like, um, you know, they look at it a little differently than maybe a lot of other people do. And, and so they weren't too happy with, you know, him, um, you know, admiring his home run a little bit. But, you know, I thought we handled it great. And, you know, I thought, you know, again, I have all the respect in the world for Wichita. Uh, so um, it's just a different, I think, you know, for the younger generations, it's just a different game. Um, and, you know. Me personally, like, I, you know, getting more old school and a little bit older, like, you know, I'm not as fond of it as, as the younger generations are, but um, but it's funny. But so it was just, again, like, uh, just Andrew being Andrew and, and having a lot of fun. I think that's, again, no different than anybody else in the entire country, for the most part in the country. But I think just Wichita, obviously, having an old school manager and old school values and the way that they go about their business, like, um, you know, they have, they have different thoughts on it. Um, and so, uh, but it was all good. I mean, that's... You know, just guys wanting to play the game the right way and what they feel like is the right way. And I think that's maybe a problem with baseball now is there's just so many versions of what people think are the best way to play the, you know, I mean, how you play the game and, you know, the, the attitudes and all that kind of stuff. And um, I think especially for us people that have grown up in the game and are older, it's just a lot different than the way we, we grew up with it. And so we just have to accept that, though, and, and kind of change with the times. And the adversity, the injuries... What do you think of eight and four tied for first after the first half of AAC play? Yeah, you know, I'm proud of the kids. I mean, I think we just keep showing up. I mean, I think there's been some times where we just kind of got punched in the face and, and it was kind of like, whoa, what do we do now and, and what's going to happen? And the guys have stepped up and we've talked about it every day in practice. Like you got to control the things that you can control. Um, there's a reason why everybody's here. Um, you all are good players. Like it doesn't matter whether you were not playing last week or playing this week or not expected to be a big part of our starting rotation. Now you're thrust into those roles. Like everybody here is talented. We've worked, everybody's worked really, really hard. Nobody's worked any less hard than, than anybody else on the team. And so we know we put the work in um, and we just got to trust it and uh, trust each other. Like um, we've proven that we can win with guys, without guys. Like even when guys were healthy, it's like if they had a bad game, other guys had to step up. So, uh, but we've been through this adversity before, whether it was last year, whether it's this year, like um, we've been through this, like we know how to handle it. We know, um, what we have to do in order to overcome it. And so, um, and again, there's been a couple oppor- a couple weeks here and there where it was like, man, like this again, or, you know, that, and, um, you know, just, just as a coach, just trying to get them to snap out of it and just get back to being us and just go out and play the game. There's a reason why we play. There's a reason why we don't just say, well, this team is supposed to beat us on paper or we're, we're too injured or everybody has injuries. Like everybody's had to go through this. Like ECU's number one's out for the season. Like, uh, Tulane's number one didn't pitch last week. Like, guys are hurt. Like, it's just 
it's just part of the game. Like, and you just never know um, where the the um, you, you don't know what the 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 where, where the how good we can be. Like, we don't know that. Like, we just got to keep working towards that. And whether we lose guys or don't lose guys, it doesn't change anything. Like, let's just worry about being the best version of us. And where that takes us, like, we have no idea. But only you're gonna find out and is go after it. And so if we just keep showing up, doing the work, and trusting each other, and and find ways to win games. And whether that's a guy like Trent Taylor who hasn't played has to step up, then let's do that. And if it's we have to steal more bases or bump more, um, we got to do that. And if it's we got to have openers and have the same guys start Friday and Sunday, then that's what we're going to have to do. And um, we're going we're to find a way. And whether that's um, by trying different things or just figuring out or just, again, just showing up and worry about the things that you can't control. Like, that's all that we're going to ask of our guys. And I feel like they've done a really, really good job of that. Um, and I thought it was a great bounce back week, and I thought that's exactly what we did. We just worried about us and did the things that we needed to do. And um, well, we got down early and we in that one game and we scored runs. Like, we felt like in some other games in the past that maybe we had just quit and rolled over and said, oh, man, like, we just don't have enough. And I thought the guys did a great job of just worrying about the things that we can control. And, and when you do that, you good things happen. Scouting report on Tulane. What can we expect to see from them yeah. this weekend? I mean, they're going to be super offensive. Uh, they got a lot of – they. I mean, they lead the league in doubles. They've hit a ton of doubles. They hit a bunch of home runs, too. Um, but they got some guys that, you know, have to have experience. Um, they got a couple young guys that are really playing really, really well. Um, but they, they bang the ball around the ballpark. Um, and so we got to be able to, 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 again, minimize the beginnings. we got to try to, um, you know, pitch to our strengths, but also uh, know what they're looking for and how they're going to try to try to do things offensively. But it's not going to be station to station. They're going to look to bang the ball around the ballpark. Um, you know, not going to try to run a lot and uh, not going to try to bunt a lot, but they're going to try to try to put big numbers up on the board. Um, and, and so we got to be able to try to minimize that. we got to play good defense and try to limit free bases and, it's going to happen where they're going to hit a homer, they're going to hit a double, and what what is what does that situation look like? Is it a, a solo shot? Um, you know, one guy on, they hit a double and score a run. Are we going to are we going to put free bases on by not playing good defense uh, or walking or hitting guys, and then those big hits end up you know turn into grand slams or three run homers or you know bases clearing doubles and things like that? We got to be able to minimize those opportunities um, and be able to do that off uh, from the from the pitching side. Um, you know, they have you know they have two guys that are especially that are pitching really really well right now uh, with the Siegel kid and the Carmuch kid, and and we just got to be able to. Do our thing. Um, use the toolbox. Don't try to do too much. Don't get enam- enamored with trying to hit home runs or whatever the case is. But just take what the game gives us. Uh, use use our skill sets and put pressure on them. Um, you know, and then, and then try to get to their bullpen. They got a really good closer, uh, but we got to try to get to the middle guys. Uh, get the starters out of the game um, and, and try to take advantage of, of doing the things that we've been really successful at. And again, that's what Wichita. I mean, they had three really good starting pitchers, and we were able to get to them early, get them out of the game, get to the middle guys, and then continue to put pressure on them and score more runs. So um, I don't think that changes. Um, we got to be able to continue to do that offensively. And, again, um, just minimize the big innings and, and you know, try to keep those those run scoring innings that they have to them. Home this weekend, a lot of promotions. What's in store for wrestling night? Yeah, you know what? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it kind of changes every year. So I know there's going to be shirts given out, you know, the Knights World Order and uh, – I'm sure all the music will be based off of off of wrestling themes. So um, always a fun night. Something we started, you know, what six years ago, and just kind of continue to to do it. So um, hopefully it'll be fun. Hopefully the crowd enjoys it, and the big crowd this weekend. I mean, two teams vying for first place and going at it uh, this late in the year. It, it's it's going to be a really big matchup for us, and um, you know, I hope a lot of fans, you know, come out. The weather's going to be beautiful, and a lot of cool things. Dollar Dog Night and um, Bark in the Park. So. A lot of cool things going on. Obviously, the baseball is going to be really, really good, and you know, I think our players, you know, really deserve having a big, big crowd out there rooting us on, helping us try to keep first place.